Making this video is a little bit cringe for me, but I'm gonna go over my basic hair routine. And this is only because one of my subscribers was asking and suggested the idea in the first place. So here we go. So hi, my name's Hemo. I'm in my early 40s. I've clearly got Indian wavy hair, naturally wavy hair, which I didn't even realize was wavy until I grew it out a few years ago. I think it's only been the last two or three months where I've actually cut it shorter again. And my hair routine is incredibly low maintenance, really, really simple. So if you've got a similar hair type to me, this video might actually be helpful. So when it comes to my hair type, I'd say it's very thick, it's wavy, you can get frizzy and it can dry out very quickly. So I'm always having to try and moisturize it. All you Indians, I'm sure you'll understand. So whenever I shower, I find that my hair gets extremely voluminous. It dries out a hell of a lot and I just need to incorporate as much moisture as possible just to keep it from looking like a mushroom basically. So I actually don't like the way my hair looks after day one of washing my hair. This is actually day three and I prefer the look of this. And I found that's due to the natural oils start to creep back in. It gives it more wave, it gives it more shape, keeps the volume a bit more under control. I guess over time gets even oilier. So that's when you know you need to wash it again. So when it comes to the shampoo and conditioner, I use the Sukin brand, which is found here in Australia. The natural shampoo and conditioner. I don't particularly like strong fragrances and this one's a very subtle vanilla fragrance which works really well for me and I've been using this for the past I don't know three to four years now and the hair cream that I use which is more a mixture of oils that can help moisturize my hair when it gets really dry is Dr. Bronner's. You can get different scents but I'm happy with this lavender scent and sometimes I use this curl cream. It does really help tame frizzy hair very well. I tend to stay away from using hairstyling products like pomades and clays. However, I used them a lot when I was younger. Okay, so when it comes to washing my hair, I wash it every third to fourth day. And that's the point where my hair gets quite greasy. So basically I wash my hair around twice a week. Oh, and one thing that I use that really helps with my scalp, it can get very flaky and itchy, a little bit of dandruff. But I found that this scalp brush works really, really well. And I swirl it around on my scalp and I tend to use it when it's dry, just before I wash my hair. And then once again, after I've shampooed it. And I found a significant improvement with flaky scalps and dandruff. It's pretty much non-existent now. I've also found that it stimulates hair growth. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested to know where I got this scalp brush from. So after I've washed my hair, with the shampoo and conditioner and I've used a scalp brush then when I want to dry it I tend to follow the golden rule not to be so aggressive towel drying your hair I basically just scrunch it and pat dry it until it's not soaking anymore because the aim is not to create too much friction cause any kind of damage to the hair which may lead to split ends and the first thing I do is I use the hair cream and I just put it on the ends of my hair I try to leave the top of my hair untouched and I put it at the back of my head and the sides of my hair because those areas become the most dry. And if I put too much on the top of my hair, then it loses its volume and it tends to go really flat. And if you're using curl cream, it's a great idea to put that in while it's damp. This is so weird to describe on camera. I've never spoken about hair before in my life. Not even to my friends, I don't bother doing it. It's just a weird topic for me. But anything to get out of my comfort zone. I find sometimes it helps to comb it in place. So I just brush it back, brush the sides, and I leave it to air dry like that. While it's drying, sometimes I tend to scrunch it up with my hands, just the ends so it gets a bit more wave and more curl. And then when it's mostly dry, sometimes I go back and I use the hair dryer because the ends of my hair kind of stick out too much. So I need a little bit of gentle heat. And I use my Dyson hair dryer to just lightly brush it in place, just so anything that sticks out kind of flows backwards. And I just do that on both sides and maybe a little bit at the back. And I scrunch it just so it curls up a little bit. And surprisingly, I found that the Dyson hairdryer works so much better than other brand hairdryers because it just seems to be more gentler on your hair and it prevents 
heat damage. It's surprising how powerful it is for such a small hairdryer. I actually find it a lot more comfortable to hold as well. There seems to be very good weight distribution and I, I like the fact that the nozzle isn't a mile away from your head. And then once it's done drying, I usually add a little bit more hair cream, especially just to the ends and at the back as well, which gives it a little bit more shape and definition. I think most people tend to use some sort of styling product and I do have a couple, but I just use them on special occasions where I really want my hair to look great for photos. And for the next couple of days, I just use the hair cream. Because I get out of bed and my hair looks like a mushroom and it's all over the place and it's just so voluminous, I tame it down with my hands and then I grab the hair cream and I put it on the ends of my hair just to give it a little bit of weight and definition and I put a tiny bit at the top to improve the way it looks and just give it more shape. For a lot of people, adding volume to hair is something that they struggle with. So what I find is if you're one of those people, I would just use the hairdryer, put my hair straight forward and just blow dry it downwards. And even when it's up, try and blow dry it in every direction to the left, to the right. And it usually adds tons of volume. I was asked a question on whether I use any kind of supplements for my hair and the answer is no. I was big into supplements a few years ago but that was more for health reasons but I've just come to realize that it just doesn't work for me, it doesn't make any kind of difference and if there is some sort of difference I think it was just placebo so I prefer to stay away from supplements and just to consume a more balanced diet of whole foods. So when it comes to age, I'm in my early 40s I think it's important to talk about hair because I found that a lot of people my age suffer from a lot of hair loss. In those circumstances, I don't know what to do, but I think I've just been genetically blessed to have a full head of hair still because it really makes a difference on your confidence and your self-esteem and makes you feel good. So losing your hair would be quite challenging to deal with, I can imagine. However, saying that, I have noticed my hair has become a lot thinner since being in my 30s. It was actually much thicker before and it appeared to be a lot more healthier. Maybe it just looks healthy on the camera because of the lighting and so forth. But yeah, I've noticed it seems to be a big issue for a lot of people my age. I mean, even on TikTok, it keeps recommending me like hair transplant videos, which I clearly don't need. I think it was around my mid to late 30s when I started seeing more grey hairs. I don't know whether to say it's grey hair or white hair, but to me it looks white. I don't have many, I don't dye my hair, I don't need to, fortunately I don't need to just yet, but I have noticed, especially in my 40s now, more and more white hairs are appearing and I generally tend to pull them out. I know you're not supposed to because it split into two. I think I've probably got I don't know, five to 10 hairs that are white at the moment. So very, very minimal. I just take out the ones that are very obvious to see right in front of my head. I'm sure at some point soon, I may consider dyeing my hair, but I'd like to avoid it as long as possible. So as I mentioned earlier, I used to have long hair. It came up to my shoulders. I could tie it up into a man bun. It's quite a trend over here in Australia. I'm glad I've done it once. I don't think I'll be growing it that long again. I quite liked the look and style of it, more of a like a bohemian surfer kind of look, especially because I've got slightly wavy hair. I'd like to mention one other factor that I believe helps quite significantly with hair growth and hair health. Not a lot of people would talk about, but it's my personal belief that if you're in a stressed out state, if you're not finding any time for solitude, if you're not doing things you're enjoying, if you're constantly in a fight or flight stress response, then it's obviously going to have some sort of impact on your overall health and your hair as well and how you feel. So I think it's really important to try and find things to help you relax whether it's going for a walk on your own reading a book or just finding space for yourself just listening to music being surrounded by nature like really makes a huge impact on your stress levels and i think overall that's just going to help the health of your hair and the longevity of it 
This video was uncomfortable for me to make because I don't generally talk about hair to anybody. I hope this is helpful for somebody out there, especially the subscriber that asked me about it. Please feel free to suggest more videos that you want me to create and I'll happily consider them. So yep, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.